Welcome back. Our watch Jessica Tapia here today with a young freedom fighter. This makes my teacher heart so happy. We are in studio today with Lucky Baseri. He is 15 years old and he is out there, boots on the ground. I was just chatting with him um, earlier and he's been activated since like seven years old, you guys. So we're going to chat with him and just learn more about him and see what he is doing to inspire other um, youth today at such a time as this. So Lucky, thank you so much for being here. Go ahead and just tell us a little bit about yourself. And um, like you shared with me a bit earlier, how this kind of all began with God putting something on your heart. Yeah, well, first, I would like to thank you for having me on. This is a great, uh, great to be here. Um, so I'm 15 years old. And when I started this, uh, really, when I was seven, I started making local city council speeches. But when it all began is I was very young. I was preschool, kinder, kindergarten, watching like the, the mainstream news. I was watching CNN, MSNBC for no particular reason other than I was just like, it was within me. Like God mm -hmm. put that in my heart to go out and do that and watch these uh, shows and learn more so that it would eventually develop into the passion I have for politics now. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. So from there, when did you start really becoming active so you knew that was on your heart between the news and the politics at what point did you start like being becoming activated within that realm yeah so my first um experiences with it were when i was seven and eight I, my city was getting a lot more uh it was like a lot of bad things were happening there the businesses were shutting down you're seeing a huge uh, uptick in crime lots amount of large amount of homeless people so we realized okay we need to change that so i started speaking at local city council meetings local commission meetings and from there it kind of blossomed into uh more statewide national politics when when i was 12 i gave my first speech on the recall gavin newsom tour uh, because i was really fed up with gavin newsom's kids were going to school i will i was deprived of an education his businesses were open our businesses were shut down and mm. i think that was unfair that was a direct violation of the Constitution, and I would not stand for that. So I started speaking out against that. Amazing. Yeah, we definitely saw rules for thee, but not for me. And it's just so incredible to me to see a young person so activated and also infuri infuriated by that. Um, I do have to pause and ask. This is... Do we have consent from your parents for you to be here? Yes. Okay, awesome. You know, everything going on in the world today with education and um, just the robbing of parental rights. So we, I want to practice what we preach here, and we absolutely believe that the rights of parents are God-given. Man cannot take those away, even though they are certainly trying to do that today. So you really started being activated locally this is santa monica correct yes and you've always lived there yeah okay and you're in public school correct mm -hmm. okay tell me a little bit about what that looks like how, how that's going i'm very interested to hear from a student since i was fired and i'm not sure if you know my story but it's just a super quick recap of what happened to me this january i was a high school pe teacher and this january my school district fired me because they couldn't accommodate my religious beliefs yeah i made that same face when i read that right because this is america like this is what what and why we were made for for religious liberty and employers like that's what they're supposed to do is accommodate religious beliefs. But we're at this really strange time right now where we're seeing transgender rights and policies and guidance come directly head to head in collision with our freedom of speech, our religious liberties. And so and we're seeing a lot of cases like mine. I'm serving my school district with a lawsuit, and there's very there's quite a few other teachers since then that have stepped out and are doing the same. And something's got to break, and so we'll see what that is. You and I know, based on the Constitution, right, that freedom of speech and freedom to religion should supersede it all. But we kind of have to wait for a ruling. So I'm so curious to hear from you. Are you seeing this type of... Thing happen in your school in your district tell us about that yeah absolutely my district is absolutely horrendous I mean they are pretty much like not just encouraging it but forcing it down our throats we have 
gender, ethnic studies. We have every like everything that you could think of that all this woke policy. This is Santa Monica is the capital of that. This is where they're starting it. This is it's their test ground for every woke experiment they want. They're putting tampon machines in the bathrooms, the um, in the boys' bathrooms. Uh, they have trans flags in every classroom, and they actively attack Republicans and conservatism and Donald Trump, even though politics has no place in schools. Right. Not not at all. But they want to bring that in and indoctrinate these kids and turn them into their own little projects, pretty much, of, you know, oh, you have any problems at all? Become transgender. That'll solve everything. That's what their whole doctrine is at this point. The, I mean, I, I don't have any problems with them talking about it, like, on their own time, but in school? Teachers? No, never. This is, that is a place for learning and education mm -hmm. where serious things need to be taught, like science and math and history. Mm -hmm. Not, I don't want to be hearing about transgenderism and politics. That's a place I, I should be t learning about that on my own time. Exactly. Especially when you're targeting the most impressionable people on the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. Teenagers going through very tough times are, that's who's being attacked and who's being plagued with this. Yes. So what do you think? I've seen obviously this, the same thing as a teacher. What do you think the very root cause and reason this is happening? Like to get to the very root of this, why is this being forced down the throats of children right now in schools? Well, I think all this stems from an agenda of, well, in order to change society fundamentally, you need to break it first. And that's what they're going through right now. They're trying to break society. They're totally breaking the fundamental laws of nature and mm -hmm. of the natural order of things. Right. And that the way they're doing that is by just confusing and destroying this generation. And, t like, you know, you've seen higher suicide rates, h way higher rates of depression and anxiety, mm -hmm. like, never before. Because they are trying to destroy this generation and turn them into a generation of, like, very, very indoctrinated, very weaker, like, weaker people, very stressed out people, very, like, way just... Generally, mentally not all their people is what they're trying to do. Right. And I find it really interesting because so I speak at a lot of school board meetings and I hear the other side come up and speak um, in terms of parental rights and the transgender policies and all of that stuff. And something that they they always bring up is that if we affirm students in their confusion, that is what will lower these suicide rates and lower the rates of depression. And on the other side, we're going, no, actually, data shows that parental involvement and guidance from parents and love from parents and and even from teachers in just, like you said, focusing on education, on truth, all we should be affirming a child, a student in is the truth. What is education if it's plagued by lies? And really, that is the root of this transgenderism is it's a lie. It's a fallacy. It's confusion. And why in the world would, would the education system that's supposed to be educating, bettering, helping guide students into a bright future, literally hold their hand and walk them down this dark road? It's heart-wrenching. Do you... What have you seen like firsthand? Are there in terms of like, have you experienced a like girl coming into your boys locker room or bathroom? Have you seen any boys like getting a tampon out of the tampon machine? What are your I guess what are your peers like thoughts on all of this? You are obviously very grounded and you are very outspoken. I'd love to hear about how your peers respond to you are are they with you are they against you what is what is that environment like for you as a conservative there yeah. absolutely it's very heart-wrenching it's disturbing but what i'm seeing right now is there's a lot of students who are really confused by this they're because this is you know it's total disruption of the natural order of things i mean it's like what mm -hmm. but at the same time they're not really speaking out about it because mm -hmm. it's being so pushed on them it's like okay it's guess it's kind of normal like mm. that's their whole thing is they're normalizing this yes. that's the they're totally making it seem like this is an everyday thing and yeah, there are girls going into boys' bathrooms, boys going into girls' bathrooms, and they're slowly er but surely erasing uh, boys' and girls' bathrooms and turning them into gender-neutral bathrooms. I think the also another response is I've gotten a lot of 
hate, and a lot of people are very upset by what I'm saying. They're very terrified of hearing my perspective and what I believe in what is really the truth because it just disrupts their whole agenda. And mm -hmm. be, I really think that it's just the indoctrination is so, so uh, extreme now that mm -hmm. they have really turned in a lot of these people, these students into warriors of their, uh, you know, of their agenda mm -hmm. in order to take these kids away from the family, from the traditional family and away from the church or their spiritual and familial warfare and making these people children of the state. Yes. Yes. We see a lot of bills right now that are also taking part in exactly that, which is so scary. But we cannot fear, right? We cannot fear man. Um, that's something that helped me over this last year when I had my career ripped out from underneath me simply because I stood firm in the Lord and in the truth. And my school district said, no, you have to comply with this or you're gone. And um, yeah, in that moment, the Lord was very clear. You, you choose to be a Christian or you choose your, to be a public educator. And I always thought that I could be both. But like you said, things have literally gotten so bad that how sad teachers are having to make that choice now, right? Because we, we as Christians deserve and should be and have the freedom to be in the public square. But we're literally seeing people like myself being purged out of the education system. What's going to be left? What kind of teachers are going to be left teaching you, the youth? And unfortunately, not many youth are like you where you are so grounded and you think for yourself and you think critically. And I'm assuming you have great support from your family. Um, but as you've received those critiques and attacks, which I can only imagine you have, how, how do you get through those? What keeps you solid and grounded and just pressing on in what you know is good, right, and true. Well, you know, it's never been easy. Um, both my brother and sister are off the rails, and, you know, I've been physically attacked. I've gotten death threats. It's been very tough, but what has really gotten me through it is my unshakable faith in God, and in the, because I know that at the end of things, we're going to triumph, okay? The Lord, we're the, God's army, God's children, we are going to win this. Mm -hmm. I believe the conservatives around the country and, you know, as Pastor Tim and you and all these outspoken patriots, we can and will win this because people are waking up slowly, but surely they're waking up and they're seeing this is absurd and this is insane. This is going to have a very, very bad reaction. Like, this is gonna, there's going to be a huge blowback. I can promise you that. Mm -hmm. People are going to wake up and say, no, this is ridiculous because this is. This is way against the natural order of things. This is against everything that is normal in this country and you know the con we have the constitution and we have god that's the two most two most important things that we have right this country was founded by on god's principles yep. and those are unshakable and we cannot let them take them away from us and if we don't then we will win this it's going to be a long and a tough battle but i really do believe that in the end we will be triumphant amen we win the second we choose god and we choose his side and his way and his truth and his life that he provides those who choose it right and that's a beautiful thing god could have very well made all humans slaves to him right but he didn't he gave humans free will the freedom to choose if they want to follow him and honor him and obey him and you know only people like you and i who make that hard choice to put him first when the world is like, no, come this way, we'll get to see how good he is and we'll get to see that victory and we'll get to see the blessings and the miracles that he provides his children as we are out there, boots on the ground, fighting the battle. Um, so speaking of that, share with us what, what you're up to, what's the latest in terms of um, like, activism on your end or uh, maybe legislation or how you're inspiring youth? What are you up to? So right now I'm in the process of starting an initiative with another young patriot where we are going to create a, try to create some na nationwide activity where we're going to be on TikTok and Instagram. We're going to spend some money in marketing and we are going to get our voices out there to the youth because frankly, the schools, the parents, the, t the media, 
and current social media, it's all going against these kids. These They don't hear anything but this indoctrination and this lies. And Gen Z and the Gen Alpha and these future gener generations will be absolutely critical to restoring this nation to the great nation it should be. Mm -hmm. This is the greatest nation on earth, and we have to protect it. So we want to go out there and get the message out to these youth, and get them involved, and get them thinking critically like they should be. Amen. That, that's literally what I was taught to do as a teacher. All teachers were taught to do is just teach their students how to think critically. And it's been appalling to sit back and see that that's not what's being taught. We're, we're teaching what to think and not allowing students like yourself to just have both sides presented and allow you to think critically about those both sides. It's like, this is the way and you accept it, you affirm it, you conform to it, period, point blank. And it's that way for students. And again, it's that way for teachers too, like myself. And it's just crazy because <laughs> these things all used to be common sense, right? Like to, what? You're telling me I need to let a male genitals into my female locker room? Like I literally had to clarify that with my superintendent. And it, yeah, if the student is identifying as female now, you, you, it would be discrimination if you don't let them in. And so here's what hit me. I want to share with you what hit me with experiencing all of that. And I'm sure you can see this too. We've come to the point where our discernment, right? Our discernment as believers, as God-fearing people, and the Holy Spirit gives us discernment. And discernment is to, to look at something and essentially determine if it is good, right, and true, if it's good or bad. And our discernment, we are now seeing the other side, the world, call discrimination. We are just living out our faith and, um, you know, what the Holy Spirit has put on our, our heart in terms of how to live this life. And a big part of it is discernment. We walk in discernment with everything, with the people we meet, with the situations we're in. But now as we're living out our discernment, we are being told we're discriminating. Absolutely. What it's turned into is an absolute echo chamber. Okay, in third grade, I was being taught that communism was a good thing. In fifth grade, I was being taught to hate white people. And in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, I was taught that Trump is the worst man to walk across the earth and everybody should be transgender. And again, more about this on the communist and socialist rhetoric. It's absurd what they're doing. It's all lies. And they're doing it because they're trying to destroy the fundamental ways of life of America. This is a total attack on the American way of life as we know it, because this country has prospered for so many years, and now they are trying to fundamentally change society and mold it in a new way that is going to be in China and China's favor. Basically, that's where we're headed. Um, do you see the tides turning at all? How do you how do you keep hope? What hope are you seeing? I know on my end, I'm definitely seeing that courage really is contagious but we have got to keep pressing pressing in and pressing on because a lot of people who are stepping out and being courageous are getting the very scary death threats um, and you know phone calls and letters and when you I really believe that the devil's not dumb right he's <laughs> he thinks about who he's gonna go after Right. Why is he going to spend his time on a Christian who keeps their faith inside and just kind of externally goes with the world, goes with the ways of the world externally, maybe, you know, believes in Jesus internally, really isn't boldly living out their faith. He's not going to spend time on much time on someone like that. He's going to spend time trying to discourage the the light on the hill right where their faith is radiating from the inside out and 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 determining every word and way and action of their life so talk to me about that like how you've seen the devil working well how i've seen the devil working is 
you know, they he's attacking the lion and lionesses of God. He's attacking the strongest and proudest voices who are boldly living in their faith because he knows that that's who's going to lead the godly revolution. That's who's going to be mm. the King Baldwins and the Davids and the Gideons who's going to go out there and fight the much larger force of the devil. That's who's going to be it. It's going to be you. It's going to be Pastor Tim. It's going to be me. It's going to be mm-hmm. people who are not afraid to speak up. You know, I people physically attacked me. P- people, I lost all my friends. But I didn't stop because I know that I'm fighting for truth and I'm fighting for, for God. And that is all I need. Amen. I'm so sorry that you've been through that. Um, but I also trust and know that he takes what was meant for evil and turns it for good. And I'm confident he's used even every hard thing you've walked through as you've been a brave, bold voice. He's used that to just continue to grow your faith and inspire other people and show other people you can be attacked and you can persevere if you have God right on your side and in your heart like you do. Um, It's just so, so cool for me as a teacher to meet someone like you. I I literally used to teach 200 kids your age. And amongst the 200, there was maybe one or two that I would say you were similar to. But it it was so sad to see the rest of them so brainwashed and so astray and so lost. So sad. Um, Lucky, where can we follow you and support you? Um, Because you have so much support. Know that. And we want you to, to feel that and be able to reach out to us anytime. So where can we do that? You can find me on uh, Instagram, Twitter, Truth Social, and Facebook at Political Lucky. Political Lucky. Okay, got it. All right. Well, unless you have any last comments, yeah, I actually would love for you to just give one last comment, like your message right now to the youth, to people your age. What I would say is take the leap of faith. Live your faith boldly. In many years ago, a thousand years ago, I'd like to share a story. King Baldwin had 4,000 men and versus Saladin, one of the greatest conquerors of all time, 21,000 men. Baldwin and his men prayed as they walked, mm. prayed that they could defend Jerusalem and stave off the Muslim attack. They went out there and they, f- they fought. They caught Saladin by surprise and they won. They won an insurmount- against insurmountable odds through the power of God and God alone. Mm. And I'm telling you, with that power, we can do anything anything we set our minds to. So take the leap of faith, speak out, be courageous, because many people will join you and we can save this country together. Amazing. That gives me chills. Perfect way to wrap that up. All right, our watch. I hope you enjoyed Lucky as much as I did. That was so, so encouraging. And it is clear he has been anointed. Cannot wait to see what God continues to do in and through him. So if you liked that, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And we will be back next time with another uh, brave, bold guest who is boots on the ground fighting this spiritual warfare that we are seeing today. So we will see you next time again. This is Jessica Tapia with Art Watch. <laughs>